Welcome to the video everyone. Just before we start, this video is the first of a few origins I will be creating to give background to many of the races we know on Gillenor. Origins will be shorter videos that contain details reaching as far back as we can go about the origins of these races. I will also be creating stories of these races which will incorporate their full history to present day. These of course will be the long videos you've all come to love. I hope you enjoy both the shorter origins videos and the stories we have ahead. But with that out of the way, let's dive in to the video. Today we are in for an exciting story about a race we've all heard of, but haven't fully explored. Before the First Age began, before Guthix found Gillenor, even before the world was shaped into what it would become. A story that's beginning precedes it all. Today I'll take you back. This is the origins of the Dragonkin. The Dragonkin are a race of powerful, intelligent and dragon-like beings. They hailed from a world abundant with orichalcum, a pure and shimmering metal. Their world existed in a time before the cycles we know today, in the universe that came before our own. Life was peaceful for the Dragonkin, until one catastrophic event changed everything. The Great Revision, a cosmic reset triggered by the Elder Gods. When the Elder Gods set forth their Great Revision, everything that existed before was caught in its wake. Zaros himself suspected that the Dragonkin's home plane was destroyed shortly after the Elder Gods departed from Freneske. When they left, only destruction followed. Some Dragonkin, such as Forsi, had intended to return one day, describing the orichalcum rich world they left behind. But fate had other plans. When the Great Revision came, the Dragonkin had no choice but to flee, hiding deep within the Abyss a space between worlds, a refuge in chaos. It's worth noting that in a discussion I've had with the lore community, that it seems definitive that although the Great Revision obliterated Freneske and thus the destruction of the Dragonkin's home plane, it was not Freneske itself. There are details extractable such as Orichalcum Rich World, and we have information that the Dragonkin created the first Dragon Items. It could be that the name Dragon Items is simply just the name even if it was created out of orichalcum or red metal as referenced. This is of course speculation, but certainly worth mentioning. We know of course that in the world today, the orichalcum and dragon are two separate things, so we know this isn't the case in the real world, but it's certainly worth speculating about from the past. Following the destruction of their home, the dragonkin set out to find a new world, a place they could call home. World after world they searched, but none could sustain them. Eventually, over 60,000 years ago, they set their eyes upon a new planet, Gilanor. This was long before Guthix discovered it, long before the First Age, but they knew immediately that this world had what they needed to sustain themselves. They settled on lush land, now known in our time as Anachronia, where they built their first city, Orthon. In this era, the Dragonkin were divided into four creeds. The Dactyl, the Certs, the Nodon, and the Augra. The Dactyl were warriors, fiercely defiant of the Elder Gods and ready to fight them. The Certs, however, wanted to prove their worth to the Elder Gods, hoping to gain favour rather than opposition. Meanwhile, the Nodon and the Augra were far more cautious. They focused on survival, repopulating and understanding the universe around them before making any rash moves. This divergence in ideology caused tension among all Dragonkin. It was during this time that a young Dactyl named Kerapak 
decided to take matters into his own hands. He developed a device called the Crucible, one capable of producing shadow anima, a substance so toxic that it could even harm the Elder Gods. Karapak believed that shadow anima could be their salvation, a way to resist, a way to fight back. But he acted alone, without informing the Kindred Council or any other dragon kin. The activation of the Crucible drew the Elder Gods' attention. They felt the shift, the audacity of mortal creatures daring to harness shadow anima. Enraged, they unleashed their wrath, destroying Orthon and obliterating Dragonkin cities. The Elder Goddess Jazz, in particular, saw these beings as purposeless mortals, grasping for power they did not deserve. Jazz decided to make an example of them. She bound the Dragonkin to the Stone of Jazz, forcing upon them the very power they craved, a power that came with a terrible price. This curse shattered the Dragonkin's spirits. They were granted immense power, but it came at the cost of their freedom. The binding caused their numbers to dwindle as they could no longer reproduce, and many were driven to madness by the curse. The Nodom, in response, chose to enter a period of forced stasis, preserving themselves by sleeping deep beneath the remains of their once great cities. The Augra, unable to cope, fled to the Abyss, where many possessed demons or infernals, losing their original forms and suffering immensely as a result. The Certs, driven mad by the binding to Jazz, became the Necrocerts, dedicating themselves to hunting down anyone who dared use the stone's power. People deemed unworthy to use the stone, the dragonkin forever named, false users. They embraced their curse and became relentless, merciless hunters. The Dactyl, on the other hand, resisted the curse as much as they could, their goal shifting to finding a cure. They experimented on themselves and others, hoping to escape the chains of the stone, and in the process, they created the first dragons, creatures meant to carry on their will. Over time, the dragonkin suffered and diminished. Their once vast numbers dwindled as they fought among themselves against the curse and the world that rejected them. Some, like the Nodon, slept through the ages, their existence all but forgotten. The Augra possessed others, becoming Calgario, while the Certs fell into madness and darkness. The proud race that had once aimed to challenge the Elder Gods had been reduced to scattered survivors, some hidden, some still seeking revenge. And there we have it everyone, there is the introduction to the origins of the Dragon Kin. I hope you enjoyed not only this one, but you are excited for all the future origins and stories we have coming to the table. I wanted to create these so that we have something for everyone. Many of you enjoy long form content, but many of you also like the short form content. So this is what I've landed on. I hope you are happy with this decision because I think it's gonna help me a great deal being able to not only have to wait weeks and weeks between videos for the long form, but you'll have something to watch in between with the origins of different races. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and joining us next time as we continue to unravel the mysteries. I'll see you in Gillenorm.